national security, an 18-year-old has been confirmed dead at Tesano in Accra when raging floodwaters swept into a storm drain, swept her into a storm drain. This follows almost two hours of Sunday's uh, morning downpour. According to residents, the 18-year-old tried to salvage her slippers, which fell into a small drain, but fell and subsequently was swept into the storm drain. This is Navi, mother of the 18-year-old Mary, who drowned in a drain at Tessan. During Sunday's downpour, Mary went chasing after her slipper and slipped into the drain and breathed her last. Abigail is a relative of the deceased. In Sweeney Ton, or from say, in Sweeney Toa, or Mumbrefi. She told me she called her children who were selling maize to come home when the rain started, but they never came. She later heard that one of her children fell into a drain and drowned. She was trying to remove her slipper that fell in the drain. Prince Enchi is an eyewitness. One of the siblings was standing close to where the incident happened. She did not call anyone's attention to it. By the time we realized, she was caught under the flood water. There was nothing we could do. She was lifeless when we got there. He says Mary would have been alive if the drain was properly constructed. Navi is still in denial of what has happened to her daughter. Mary, I want to die in your stead. Please come back home. For now, the body of the deceased has been removed by the police and deposited at the morgue. Emma Davis for Joy News. So what is government doing about this situation, especially the works in house and ministry? My colleague Elton Bobe joins me via Zoom as uh, we go through the presentation to uh, a presentation that was made to cabinet and an impasse between the works and housing ministry over funding. Elton, uh, first of all, tell us about the briefing to cabinet on the subject of flooding. The briefing, as we have it, this was somewhere in 2021 when Francis Asensu Wache had taken over the Works and Housing Ministry. So at the cabinet meeting, he was asked to update uh, cabinet on services being taken by government to deal with the perennial flooding in the greater Accra region. So his presentation touched on what has been done, what needs to be done, the financial implication, and if not done, the implications of what we are likely to see uh, in the years that were to follow, and we're already in 2022, and we are seeing uh, the effects of no action that has, that, that, that has not been taken, the result of what we are seeing every day on a daily basis when we have the rains. Mm -hmm. uh, did the presentation offer recommendations to fix its specifics? Of course, uh, a lot. I mean, but basically, uh, it had to do with government being bold enough to, you know, back the plan of action of the needed financial resources. In fact, the presentation is even futuristic in terms of how much will be required in 2022, for example, 2023, all the way to 2024. By their own estimation, by the end of 2024, if government is current with the financial releases and the contractors are on track to deliver what they've said they will do, we should have no flooding beyond 2024. And the amount of money involved by 2024 will be 2.7 billion Ghana cities. But as we speak now, even the allocation or the projection for 2021 and 2022 
has yet to be released. So what's been the challenge? I mean, you have seen, uh, you know, correspondence between the Works and Housing Ministry and the Finance Ministry uh, on, you know, if you want, a, a sort of challenge in terms of the release of monies to the uh, Works and Housing Ministry to undertake some of these works in order to address the situation. Well, the interesting is about the lack of reply to the many letters that we've seen between the Works and Housing Ministry and the Finance Ministry. In fact, it's become a one-way traffic because you see only the letters from the Works and Housing Ministry, but no uh, corresponding reply from the finance. For example, I think that the correspondence started uh, in June 2021 when it became clear that we were faced with danger of being, you know, challenged with dealing with the flooding situation. So, for example, in 2021, the ministry's first letter to the, for the, the finance ministry was the application for commencement certificate for the 2021 emergency national flood control program. And the amount the ministry requested, according to this uh, letter, is 888.3 million Ghana cities. And the ministry requested this money uh, to mitigate the perennial flooding within the communities in the greater Accra region prevent disruption of vehicular movement during heavy rains, provide means for safe conveyance of grey water, mitigate dry uh, damage for infrastructure facility, okay. and also mitigate the dis displacement of people within flood prone areas. So this is the first letter that went to the ministry. And they gave the breakdown as you know excavation at the Sultan, 94.8 million Ghana cities, and construction works uh, 793.5 million Ghana, all put together. 888.3 million Ghana. So okay. I'm told they waited for a reply. And Elton, they you said come. this is dated when? Uh, so the first correspondence is dated 4th of June, 2021. Okay. Yes. So they waited, there was no response, and then they followed it up with another letter. And this is 11th, 11th August, 2021. So the, 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 the headline is uh, reference. The same application for commencement of certificates for the 2021 emergency national flood control program. And this particular uh, letter, the apart reads, we wish to respectively draw your attention to the fact that time is of the essence in the flood control program. Our consultants will require adequate time to complete detailed design and go through the procurement process ahead of implementation. Construction of each project will take a few months to complete. For us to achieve beneficial use of these investments, they need to be completed before the onset of the next major rains in April 2022. And again, it provided a, a breakdown of construction work, 793.5 million, and excavation of the certain 94.8. So the same figure, 888.3 million Ghana cities. Again, they didn't get a response to this correspondence from the Ministry of Finance. Elton, and then again, and Yeah, so that was a yes, third. Again, I, I, I get was a third, and this is 2nd June, just uh, 2022. Okay. Uh, this is this year. And in this letter, it says that following this, we respectfully, uh, they, they said that at the presentation to Cabinet on the State of the Candy Drainage Infrastructure on 5th August 2021, the Ministry detailed the urgent need to embark on the 2021 and future national flood program. And this letter actually warned that further, uh, the Ministry continues you know, uh, decision to ignore their letters is creating a situation where they are unable to respond to what they need to do. So if there should be a flood, they would have, you know, be in readiness to do their way. Mm. But the ministry is not helping them to do it. And right. they even requested just 200 million Ghana cities to take, to take care of some urgent work uh, to contain what was likely to happen. Again, there was no response. Mm. Elton, thank you very much uh, for bringing us those details, those correspondence between the Wax and Housing Ministry and the Finance Ministry. So we, we've cited three letters, one in June 2021, the other in August, and one in this year, uh, June, in which the Wax and Housing Minister is asking for money to be able to execute the plan to deal with this perennial issue. Why the delay? Why the lack of response? Uh, let's do some analysis on this. Engineer Abdullah joins me via Zoom uh, with more on this. Uh, Engineer, thanks for your time you on joining us. Let's start uh, with what we are learning now. Uh, it's a row between the Finance Ministry and the Works and Housing Ministry.
Do you find that strange that the finance ministry has yet to respond to such important letters? I, I, well, good evening to your cherished viewers. I know that you can hear me. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Well, I, I think that it is the most unpleasant news to hear at this time of the day. Um, we should know that the Minister for Finance does not have the discretion of taking or issuing or releasing monies which are meant for emergencies, especially once it has gone to cabinet. There's no sense of urgency from the Minister of Finance. In fact, in the coming days, we'll be bringing out a lot of um, uh, information about the reluctance of the Minister of Finance in issuing or releasing monies to certain sector, sectors of the, of the economy to make uh, um, things work. How can you be receiving such letters from the sector minister after a cabinet meeting has been held way back in 2021? Until date, monies have not been released. And we want to equate or situate all the contents as an indiscipline factor which is creating the mess in Accra. This buttresses the, the fact that the other report in from 2015 2019 says that you are supposed to do about 110 kilometers of drainage in Accra and only under 11 percent have been done. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the trajectory from 2018 in particular, 2019, when we're rather having an uh, increase in terms of devastation and um, inundation of the, the, the land surface, uh, land by the surface water, this is this approach of the minister. I think it's, it's unpardonable. And the minister should be should, should be held accountable for some of the, the issues that are happening. But I might be quick to say that um, in the report, I'm told that whenever do, uh, in the event that these monies are released to the sector ministry, we're not going to receive any, uh, we're not going to experience any floods. I'm sorry. We can do as many as uh, we can in, in the terms of um, developing or expanding our drainage systems in the in the capital. But because the capital is a low-lying area, we will be receiving some pocket. However, it's only prudent that whatever plan has been given out to the minister, money should be released as, as a matter of agency to save lives and property. I don't know how we can hold this minister to be responding to reasons why he decided to do at his own discretion when the cabinet has seen the agency in this kind of problem we are having. And mm. we are, the, the, the fact that we, are, we sustain this advocacy on TV and radio, we are not seeing the results, I mean, counter results of positivity on the, on, 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 on the lands. The more we talk, the more the devastation. The records are there to show. Mm. You are supposed to construct 18 buffer areas, like ponds in Accra yeah. or in the capital, to be able to absorb all the water. And none, not even one, had been started. Well, well you, you, if you talk about the, the Auditor Minister? General's report, for instance, Engineer Mahama, and, and uh, you, because you, 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 you are in the business uh, and you, you take on major projects as well, you know how some of these things work. When you look at uh, the figures, and Kofi J of our research desk will be joining us shortly to bring us a breakdown of the figures uh, of the budgetary allocation. We are doing some trend analysis of this. When you consider that... Um, does that give you confidence? What does that say for you about government's commitment to fighting uh, or addressing this issue of uh, perennial floods? And I, I just want you to chew on that shortly. Kofi is here with me in the studio. I'll come back to take your response on that, Engineer Abdullah. Uh, but Kofi, uh, give us you know, a fair picture of what the uh, figures look like in terms of the budgetary allocation that has been made over the years and what has actually been released to the ministry. Uh, what, what do we know? What have you found? So when you were speaking to Elton, Elton made mention of some 700 million Ghana cities going in for construction. Yeah. That's from 2021 to 2024. Yes. But if you look at this Auditor General's report from 2015 to 2019... Well, Kofi, we seem to have a, a challenge with your sound. We'll correct that and uh, we will, uh, you know, come back to you for uh, those details. But uh, your response to the question, uh, Mr. Mahama. You have to. I want to see how you have to study the question in a certain context. I want to know exactly what you want to hear from that. As in the figures being which have been given, or the, uh, the increasing with the construction to be done. If you can come again, sir. 
asking that you're asking the figure that has been issued. I mean, the 888 million Ghana cities. Are, are you asking whether it is satisfactory for the construction or... Well, well I'm just asking what your view is uh, in, as far as the commitment of government. Do you think that government has shown enough commitment to addressing this issue? Well, as far back as 2019, I, I was emphatic by saying that we look to do a lot of talk. And in fact, recently, uh, I must give, um, I must pardon the, the works and housing minister when I said that enough of the, uh, the cameras. He goes around to check whether we're having um, challenges after the rains have come. And unfortunately, if he, he tables all this information to the, uh, what do you call it, the minister, and the monies are not paid, the monies are not released for this construction to start in earnest, how can I blame the minister, the second minister in charge of works and housing? Absolutely not. The, that's what I'm saying that in the first instance, the fina, fina, minister of finance doesn't have the discretion as to when he decides to release monies earmarked for such emergencies. And he, the earlier he's told in set and place, the, the, the better. Because the people who are losing their lives are not going to be compensated by government in totality. Mm. So he cannot. If the money is available and there has been a direction from cabinet, he needs to respect cabinet and release such money so that Very he well. would be able to address the, fly, the, the challenge before the flood visitors in the rainy season. Mm. Uh, well, let's return to uh, Kofi AJ. And uh, Kofi, you were just about giving us a breakdown of the figures. Uh, what, what have you found? So I was saying in your conversation with... Um, Elton, he made mention of some 700 million cities being allocated for construction yeah. between 2021 to 2024. Mm -hmm. But if you should look at this Auditor General support from 2015 to 2019, and you look at the amount we spent on the construction and maintenance of drains and culverts, you could see that there's a huge difference between the figure Elton mentioned and what we have here. And so the next slide, which talks about the construction of drains from 2015 to 2019. Just like Engineer Mahama was saying, government targeted 110, you know, drains to be constructed. And by the end of the year, within the same, this, this same period, they were able to construct only 12.2 kilometers of these targeted, um, you know, 10, um, 110, drains. you know, drains that they said they were going to do. And if you should look at construction of retention pond, again, he made mention of that as well, 18 of them. And within this period, as we speak, government hasn't been able to do any of these 18 you know ponds uh, or retention ponds that they said they were going to do in within the period under review and as now there are there are some other fascinating you know findings and one it says that the ministry of works and housing did not maintain completed completed and existing drains because maintenance was not a priority so again it's not only the the problem of the finance ministry but the ministry itself also have some challenge so each year from 2015 to 2019, the HSD department, you know, significantly fell short of implementing their target of drainage, you know, facility needed to uh, mitigate flooding, you know, nationwide. And what we've been speaking about almost the whole day, point number four, I'll come to that. But point number three says that most construction works could not be completed due to the allocation of insufficient funds mm. you know over the period that were planned and then four says ministry of finance did not release funds on time to complete drainage project causing the project to stall now if you should look at the budgetary allocation for the ministry of um, works and housing over the period we did from 2020 to 2022 now from 2020 the initial allocation was around 268 million ghana cities and this was slashed down to somewhere around, that same year was slashed down somewhere around 229. And in 2019, there was a further decline from the earlier year to, you know, about 23% um, decline to 175 million Ghana cities. And this year, the ministry has been allocated 429 uh, million Ghana cities. We just hope that this should not be slashed down as the previous Any ones further. were, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the, the effect of flood, again, from the Auditor General's report, so like the total recorded floods from 2015 to 2019, we, account, we could count around 1,446 floods, and injuries as a result of floods is around 309 injuries, and unfortunately, we've recorded 510 
you know, deaths. Five, we've lost 510 precious lives as a result of these um, flood issues. Now, houses that have been inundated, somewhere around 54,744. And if you should look at farmlands destroyed, people's properties, farmlands destroy, uh, destroyed, it's around 136,563 in this period under review. Mm. Then again, still on the effect. So right from 1960, when we started having these issues, you know, recognizing them, we've, we've had over 4 million people being affected by floods, and this is about 12% of the current population uh, that we have, and, and this is worrying. The amount of economic damage as a result of flooding exceeds some 780 million US dollars, and you know, at least every year we encounter at least one major flood event in Kofi, that. thank you very much. That's the, the figures speak for itself. Absolutely. And uh, let me just take the final words of Engineer Mama, who is still with us on Zoom. Engineer, uh, your very final words on this issue, this perennial issue of flooding and how it should be addressed. I've been very emphatic to say that um, this resource or the information that you are channeling out on your screen shows the lack of the will. The, from the side, the side of the government. Secondly, as population is increasing by the day, over the past seven, eight years, we might have had over seven to six or eight percent increase in population growth within the capital. Mm -hmm. Ironically, every house is allowed to tar the whole compound by increasing, preventing infiltration of water into their soil by increasing the volume of water on the surface of the earth. Sadly, the buffer or the ponds which are supposed to be accommodating these waters that will be gushing out of people's homes not even one out of 18 had been done this is pathetic and this discussion had to continue with all the seriousness involved so we can ask the sector minister what his challenges are we are prioritizing other irrelevant things and handling them at a time that we need this one the most yeah. i'll just digress one second the overlays in accra we are doing asphalt overlays in part of accra east legon uh, west hill West Legon, Cantonment, Usu, and in its environs. When this is an emergency, those roads are better to stay for the next five, ten years. But this is a priority. But meanwhile, well. the minister has well. not sent any money to this area for any expansion work to be mm. done in this area. Thank you very much, Engineer Maham. I'm grateful for your time here on Joining Us Prime. And still to come in the bulletin, we will tell you about 28-year-old Bintu, a headquarter who is taken to treating her one-year-old son suffering from diarrhea with amoxicillin capsules meant for adults.